Hello, my name is Justine and I'm a mental health counselor. In this video, I will talk about how to relate with children from the most loving and caring space. And at the same time, do not dismiss boundaries which are needed for the proper development of their brain. As a play therapist, I have been working with children and their parents for several years. And the most common phrase that I hear is, no one has ever prepared me for this. So in this video, I will give you tools on how to create emotional connection with your child and how to alter the undesirable behaviors by looking what's underneath that, what's underneath their behaviors and how to alter those behaviors in a healthy and constructive way. Daniel Sagal, an American psychiatrist from UCLA, says that to discipline children means to teach them, and to effectively teach them means to emotionally connecting with them before giving them any instructions. And who we are as parents, the way we are around them, has the biggest impact on their behaviors, their brain development, and the way they can deal with life in the future. To discipline does not mean to punish or impose consequences. Spanking times out does not support the healthy development of their personality and their brain. A caregiver is a source of child's safety. So it is very confusing for the child to run to their parent or caregiver for protection if the parent is verbally or physically abusing them. Additionally, physical abuse, such as spanking or verbal abuse, such name callings, causes ruptures in child's neurobiological development. It creates long-lasting damage to their brain and causes death to brain connections and brain cells. A violent approach to children causes them also to move to their reptilian brain, a part of the brain that is very reactive, it's not receptive. So basically, they are not able to hear anything we are saying because they are being in their survival mode. So neurobiologically, it is not possible for them to hear us. So first, we have to emotionally connect with them. We need to calm their brain. So they move from their reptilian brain to their prefrontal cortex, which is responsible for their constructive executive thinking and only then we're able to teach them only then they're able to hear what we have to say another violent approach is when a caregiver makes any comments about their child's body so especially during adolescence when the young man or a young woman they're they're just forming the identity they want to explore their sexuality. So any kind of comments about the way they look or about their way of being creates extreme damage to their self-esteem and a base for mental health issues that might come up in the future. For example, the child might have difficulties to create healthy and harmonious relationships in the future, might have chronic anxiety, eating disorders, codependency issues, so instead of punishing them, instead of forcing on them our own ideas and thoughts, we need to relate with them from a place of emotional connection and love, feeling them from the inside, emphasizing on what is behind their behavior and get curious about them. Every time your child misbehaves, it gives you an opportunity to understand them better to understand what they need help with. So before you can do anything, it's very important to emotionally connect with them, to let them know that you are with them in their experience. And that approach will allow them to move from the reptilian part of the brain to the prefrontal cortex part of the brain, which is responsible for understanding, for self-reflection, for creative thinking. And as your child is in that part of the brain, 
they will be open and receptive to whatever you have and want to teach them. So what can be on the way to emotionally connect with the child? So very often when the child misbehaves, a parent might have what I call like loud music playing out behind their ears, which is he should do this, he should do that, he should behave in this way or that way. And very often that music creates an emotional disturbance for the parent and, and create, creates a blockage to connect emotionally with the child. So in that moment, that means that the child has pressed a button for the parent where, where the parent has their own issues around the subject, where he did not examine his own childhood in, in that area. So therefore, it cannot approach the child in a constructive way. So in other words, children might trigger us as therapists, parents, teachers, in so many different ways, but they, they, are, they just show us where we have not had a chance to embrace ourselves yet, to embrace our childhood yet. So before we can approach a child and teach them anything, we need to emotionally regulate ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, oh, this behaviors, what does it wake up in me? Why am I having an re emotional reaction toward it? What, what, are, what is the belief system that is running behind what I want to teach the child? Is it really mine? Is it coming from the society? What is it? So we have to investigate deep, deeply in our own minds and see where, where are we coming from? Daniel Sagal, in his book, Parenting from the Inside Out, explains beautifully that if parents don't investigate into their own childhood, into their own childhood experiences and process their pain, it might have a huge impact on the, on the development of their children, on the development of their brain, their cognitive ability, their social skills, their self-esteem, their capacity to relate with others in the future, issues at school, processing difficult emotions. To be mindful of our own reactions is crucial. And if we feel emotionally unstable, it is not a moment to teach them anything. Then it is time to reflect on ourselves. As we notice that we feel more relaxed, we can approach the child open up a conversation about their behavior and deeply listen. Loving touch, open body posture, a kind tone of voice. It will lower cortisol level in your child's brain. It will create a healthy bonding between you and your child. And at the same time, the child will be more receptive to whatever you have to say. So preparing the ground is crucial even before you start to teach, you can say to the child how much you love them, how much you value their relationship, to let them know that you're on their side. So as you prepare your ground, you can move to setting lovely limits with your child. You can open a conversation, which is not about who is right. It's not about guilt tripping or pity. It's not about calling them stupid or not capable but it's about getting curious about their behaviors. It's about sharing with them how their behaviors influence you, how they make you feel, maybe explaining to them how they may have impacted others, how they may have impacted their friend or their teacher. Get curious about, get curious about why they behaved the way they did. What's underneath that behavior? Maybe they were missing your attention, Maybe they were looking for connection. Maybe they wanted more love. Maybe they wanted more attention. So for example, if the child lied to you, you may say, it hurt me when you lied to me. And now I feel that trust between me and you has been broken. Do you think we can do something to repair it? Or if your child broke a commitment, you can also ask the kid, what can you do to help us to rebuild trust between us? Or you can say to your child, when, whenever the child has been back home and is being late, you can say, when you said you're gonna be back home at five and you were late, I was worried that something happened to you. Another way of creating 
deep emotional connection with your child is to always acknowledge their emotion. So for example, your daughter wanted blue shoes and you bought her red. It's not about saying to her, oh, you should be grateful, but it's about acknowledging her disappointment. It's about saying to her, sweetie, I can see that you feel disappointed because you wanted blue shoes, not red ones. And only then move, from, move to an explanation why such an incident took place. So as I mentioned, always acknowledging the child's emotion before you move any further. And if you notice that the child is very emotionally active, before you can move to any conversation, you have to emotionally support the child to calm down. You can do that by naming the emotion for them. You can ask them to go deeper into that experience by, for example, saying, sweetie, I can see that you're angry. Is there any place in your body that you feel that anger? Or you can ask them to draw that anger on a piece of paper. And at the same time, you might support the child by feeling this emotion with them. As you do that, you're creating an emotional attunement. So by naming and acknowledging the emotion for them, you help them to process this emotion. And this approach will also support the proper construction of their neurobiology. So the beauty and the nature of the brain is that the brain is maladaptive. So even if the child was exposed to damaging experiences in the past, the brain can still be healed. It starts healing when it becomes exposed to a new corrective parenting approach. Correction and parenting can heal the child's brain on the neurobiological level, resulting in a child's ability to control their impulses, expand their ability to handle emotions, and correct inappropriate behaviors, which will result in making better decisions and create better relationships in the future. And if there is any damage that has been done to the connection between you and your child, that also can be repaired. But as parents, you have to learn your skills and practice them. And at the same time, you have to do deep work on yourself. Our capacity to handle things well is not constant. The capacity of our kids to handle things well varies. So it's important to understand that we all do the best we can. And also to understand that the kids are not an extension of their parents. They came here to discover themselves. So we can support them to discover their own personality. We can support them to discover their own voice and their own vision for life. Thank you for watching. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope you liked the video. And if you have any questions, please comment below. I'll answer all of them. And give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.